Hi, I'm Matt, and at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you exactly where my friends are and what they are doing using only my psychic abilities. So if you've been on the planet at all in the last three years, you've probably seen Netflix's hit show Stranger Things. And you probably took notice of Eleven's keen ability to see exactly where her friends are simply by visualizing it. If you're at all like me, you've probably thought, well, I wish I could do that. Well, now I'm finally asking, why can't I? And to channel my inner waffle-loving child government experiment, I'm learning how to remote view. Remote viewing, according to the International Remote Viewing Association, or IRVA, is a mental faculty that allows a perceiver, or a viewer, to describe or give details about a target that is inaccessible to normal senses due to time, distance, or shielding. Basically, seeing a person, place, or thing that the viewer is not physically present for, whether it be a different location, time period, or obscured behind a barrier of some kind. And while remote viewing might imply only a visual element, Irva points out that the viewings can also involve other senses, impressions, or even simply a knowing. In Stranger Things, this is depicted by a large black void that gets filled out with detail the stronger Eleven's impressions become. In order to test my abilities in progress, I've devised two tests. As a primer to test my baseline abilities, I've asked my fiance to create a drawing and put it in an envelope. Once sealed, I will then attempt to remote view the contents of the envelope and jot down my impressions. All right, the session begins now. I don't know what I'm doing at all. Wait, I just realized that the hardest part of this is drawing with your eyes closed. Wait, is that what they do? See, I don't know what I'm guessing at and what I'm actually seeing, but I immediately saw like, I immediately saw like a dog that looks like that. Something like that. The next thing I saw was, uh, it was like a mountain that looks like this. I don't think you draw somebody skiing, but it was someone skiing. Like I keep getting like a lake. It's like a lake near the mountain. This is my guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but it seems like it's some sort of a, I got some kind of mountain escape resort. Five. The authorities on remote viewing say, be honest with yourself. If you think you got something close, if you think that there was something, oh, I kind of saw a shape of that, kind of give it to yourself, but be honest. Oh. I didn't see that at all. Shaken by the test results, I reach out to Irva for guidance. While you might be thinking that there's no way this is real anyway, it's worth pointing out that in the early 1970s, the CIA established a psychic spy program that would last for 20 years. The program passed through various government agencies, but eventually became known as Stargate. The program started out by recruiting people who purported to have ESP, or extrasensory perception, but it soon turned to military personnel who appeared to exhibit the same skill sets. According to Major Paul H. Smith, a former military analyst and intelligence officer who would go on to become president of IRVA, programs like Stargate utilize this paranormal ability to make educated guesses about what inaccessible Soviet sites might be up to. While successes were difficult to document, in one instance a viewer predicted a new type of submarine months before it was confirmed to exist. The program lasted for 20 years, worked with 227 psychics, and completed 26,000 trials before being decommissioned in 1995. Much like the government learned, it appears that the ability to cultivate the skills to remotely view aren't necessarily magical mystical powers only endowed to psychics. The president and director of IRVA, John Cook, said in an interview that it is a sense that every human being has to varying degrees. The ability or aptitude for it is distributed in the general population probably something like musical inclination is. Perhaps remotely sensing my need for assistance, the same John Cook, president of the International Remote Viewing Association, sits down with me to offer guidance. John, I cannot thank you enough for meeting me. I uh, think I need help <laughs> a little bit with this. Do what we can. So can you tell me just a little bit about what Irva does? Irv is a nonprofit uh, that was set up in 1999 to educate people about 
remote viewing, kind of sort out some of the, the crazy from, uh, well, the still crazy, but the uh, actually true. So in Stranger Things, uh, Eleven, the main character, basically sees the person in a dark black void uh, and whatever it is that they are doing. Can you elaborate a little bit on what it's like to experience an impression or what it's like when you're kind of, you know, zeroed in? Um, I have to confess that when I watch Stranger Things as a fan, it didn't actually occur to me for some reason that that's what they were getting at. Interesting. <laughs> it's just kind of embarrassing in hindsight now. Um, it's not like just looking at a picture or watching a video. That's sort of the impression that you get in certain types of popular representations of, of psychic stuff. What it is more like is the, the analogy that I came up with is it's like trying to remember the name of a band that you it's it's on the tip of your tongue and you have to kind of tease it out in, in your mind. How do you distinguish between guesses and what yeah. you what are, what are actually a you know solid impression? Yeah, and the key thing there um, is that you don't. Um, you can't uh, and you shouldn't. So that, it's a good rule of thumb for beginners is that if you're getting crisp, clear visuals, like I said at the beginning, like you shouldn't be, if you are, it's probably not good data. What does the practice look like for a professional remote viewer? Is there some sort of like, is it meditation? Is it, you know, looking at objects more? I don't know. What is the practice like? <laughs> Those are two good ones right there. Meditation, you know, is, is never wrong because uh, you're quieting yourself. You're sort of learning to either not listen to anything or listen to progressively more and more subtle kind of things in your own in your own space. Looking at objects is important. And, and this is probably the most important thing that a beginning remote viewer needs to do. And it's really short, so you can just easily make it into a poster for your wall. It's describe, don't name. It's like, here's a pen. Um, I immediately identify it as a pen. Try not doing that for a while. Try uh, not using nouns. You know, it's it's hard. It's uh, kind of long. It's it's cylindrical. It's it's hollow. I tell that it's hollow. If I got into it a little bit, I could be like, there's some stuff down the middle. It could be that I'm working a target in remote viewing that is a pen. It could be that I'm working a target in my remote viewing that is a subway car or a subway tunnel. Those descriptors are all still accurate. The second I'm like, it's a pen, everything that I say after that point is pen stuff. So John, like you said, it's it's not necessarily a kind of like a supranormal um, ability, but perhaps a little bit closer to something that, you know, some people have, some people don't. Is there a chance that I just don't? I think that one of the one of the key things that's come out of now 50 almost 50 years of research um, on this is that it's frequently the people that don't believe they have a psychic bone in their body that actually do the best. With John's advice in mind, I prepare myself for my greatest challenge. For my final test, I have asked three friends to film themselves doing an activity at a particular time. At the same time, with no knowledge of what my friends are doing, I will do my best to view their location and document as many details as I can. Once the viewing session is over, I will put my notes against their videos. For some reason, I'm getting like a, um, like a candle in a jar. Uh, what I'm I'm definitely getting a flower I'm getting the the word like beige or tan I don't know why or she's 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 making an arrangement why would uh, arrangement or um, uh, picking flowers the the strongest thing I got is him eating something sweet. Now I know he likes sweets, but that's, again, that could be a guess. I don't know if it's a bicycle, but like I, I see like a wheel of some sort. I'm, I'm getting nothing other than the sun, green, and flowers. All right, let me, let me, let me look at the space around him. Let me look at the space around him. Okay, I see a window to his left. I can see him in a weird sweater. 
I'm getting um, some sort of a painting of, of nails. It doesn't look like it has curtains. It might have blinds up, but they're open and, sun, and, and light is, is beaming in on him. Well, now I just have to watch the videos for the proof that I am in fact an expert viewer. What's up, man? How's it going? It's a beautiful day. Running through the city, Los Angeles. Gonna try and run five miles. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm in my apartment and I'm roller skating. Ah! I'm practicing stopping. Where I'm at right now, I'm just gonna be folding some laundry. That's actually what I have time for today. With Jack, I was way off. He was outside trying to run five miles. What I did get right though, and maybe it's just because it's LA, there's an alarming number of beige or tan buildings in the background of the footage. Um, he is wearing a sweatshirt. Okay, so what did we get right? What did, what did we get right about Arya's? A uh, hundred percent. I think the sunlight thing, I think the sunlight thing is kind of spooky. I said that there was sunlight from the left of him on his face. I'm gonna give myself something there. I wrote a few things down for Megan. I said outside, shrubs, trees, sunlight. This is the darkest video I've ever seen. I said she might be smelling flowers. I definitely got a zero percent on this. Honestly, you the viewer, uh, with all of the evidence, you're kinda gonna be the one who decides whether or not any of that uh, was worth anything. Okay, John, I'm afraid to ask, but you've seen the results. What do you think? Well, first off, congrats. You're a remote viewer. Uh, the, uh, the one that you did with Aria at least was a hit. I, honestly, it shook me a little bit, uh, just a tad. You nailed that one. So uh, other than the fact that I did a lot of naming and very little describing, despite your advice, um, <laughs> was there anything else that you noticed uh, about the session? Well, one thing interesting that happens if you do a lot of sessions too close together is that they can bleed together. It's not an excuse, but um, the business of having a sweatshirt, which seems like a throwaway comment, actually, Aria at one point is holding up a sweatshirt in like a super obvious, clear way. Um, that wasn't part of his target, but you saw something like that. A bike that you thought was with Jack, who knows if it was there, but... Megan has a bike okay. hanging in super obvious format on her wall. It's a huge visual cue in, in that whole section. I, I, I don't think that I would claim that. I think I'd be too afraid to claim that. But what I will say is it's it's at nothing else. It's it's spooky. <laughs> it's neat. It's neat. <laughs> I'm definitely interested in this. And perhaps I may be good at it. Um, what would my next steps be uh, for going further down this road? You know, practicing, um, really just continuing to play with it and practicing that describe don't name uh, even your your target that you nailed if you had described the wrapper of the thing you thought he was eating it would have been a perfect match for the crumpled laundry uh, it, it just gets better and better if you skip out on those nouns I'm gonna say I'm questioning everything um, I cannot thank you enough John okay talk to you later honestly I I'm really impressed with not only my successes, but the successes that have been documented in the history of remote viewing. I think on top of the like unexplainable successes of remote viewing, the thing that impressed me the most was kind of the community that welcomed me in and really wanted to help me. I mean, the people at Irva wanted no money from me. They just wanted to help and to foster my interest in this new field. I think if you find yourself interested in remote viewing like I did, just go to Irva's website. And if you're skeptical about remote viewing or just interested in it, John said something that, that continues to stick with me. Uh, just keep in mind that it's all impossible anyway. So if you can do it some of the time, that's pretty good. <laughs>